All right, if we create a custom brochure like this, on the one hand, we can see where there's probably obviously a fold, but down here, it's kind of a guess. And unless you've built over the top of somebody else's template and they know where the fold is supposed to be, you need to tell them where that's gonna happen at. So that's what we're gonna do in this lesson is show you how to create a custom export on your own that gives your printer your fold marks and your trim so they know where to do those things. So what we're gonna do, in this first lesson, I'm gonna show you how to do this in InDesign, then we'll do it again in Illustrator. And you can just kind of pick your poison, you know, choose however you want to do it. I use both ways, it just really depends on the project. So let's go ahead and create a new document in InDesign. And I'm going to go ahead and create a two page document, one for the front, one for the back. And we'll turn off facing pages. We'll make this a 12 inch by nine inch document, so it's the exact same size as our brochure. And then right now I'm gonna turn off the gutter and I'll put my columns at three since they were equal columns when we did this. I'm gonna turn off my margins here. And then this is what where the important part is. So for the bleed, we wanna add an eighth inch bleed all the way around, which actually adds a quarter inch to the file size. So we'll put 0.125, that's an eighth of an inch on all sides. And then for the slug, what the slug is, is extra space around the document where you can put anything you want, notes to the printer or other design elements or whatever. It doesn't print, but it exports with the project so your printer can see that. So I'll just put a two inch slug on all sides here. And then I'll go ahead and hit OK. So now we've got a two page document here. And by turning off facing pages, now instead of these being stacked side by side, it's just two pages. All right, so we see our columns, everything's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is first bring in that final artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to File and Place right here, Command D is that shortcut. And let's find our final brochure file. So Final Sent, Finals. And let's go ahead and start with the outside of the brochure. I'll click Open. And then I'm just gonna come up to the top left and paste it. And just to make sure it's where I want it to be, I'm gonna come over here and make sure I align to page and then center and horizontal center that document. Okay, so now we're in good shape and it looks really terrible. Why is that? Well, remember, Illustrator or InDesign tries to kind of save you from yourself if you have a slow computer and it turns down your display performance. So come to view, display performance and turn on high quality display and now it should look a lot better. All right, so we've got that going. Now on page two, I'll double click there and hit Command D to place the uh, inside of my brochure. I'll open that and I'll just click anywhere since I'm going to use this shortcut over here on the top right to align horizontal and vertical centers. So that looks good. My margins are in the right spot. Just double check in that that looks good and that falls exactly where I want it to be. So that tells me that I did set up my document correctly. All right, so that looks good. Now what we need to do, we could just export it just like this and add crop marks, but I do wanna go ahead and spell out exactly where my fold is supposed to be. There's a couple ways we could do this. We could do it on each page individually, or I could use my A master and do it here. So what I'm gonna do is jump over to layers, and I'll rename this layer. Everything is currently on this one layer. I'll rename this artwork, and that is where my artwork will live. And then I'll create a new layer above it called guides. One thing to notice when we have the new layer icon open, if I double click on this, I can actually turn off print this layer. So you can put layers on top. So you could actually have a true guide on front of your artwork and then turn that off and it won't actually print. Whatever's on that layer won't print. But in this case, I want it to print. I'm gonna put my guides in the slug area. So I want my printer to be able to see that. So I'll leave that selected and I'll click okay. Now what I'm gonna do is zoom in a little bit. And again, we are, we are working on our master page, but let me just make sure here. Yep, we're on our master page. And I'm gonna use my pen tool to draw a line here. So I'm just gonna click once and then shift click to another spot here, right on that margin. And right now it doesn't fill with a fill or a stroke. So I'll come up here and let's go ahead and give it a cyan color so we can see it. And I'm gonna change this from a solid line to a dashed line. And then I'm just gonna move this up by holding down the shift key so it stays in line. I'm gonna hit the letter T to get my text box. I'll click and drag, and I'm just gonna type in the word fold. All right, so we got that set, and I'm gonna change that to cyan as well. Hit okay. All right, so there's one fold mark. And then I'm gonna highlight this, hold Alt, click and drag, hold down Shift to drag a copy. 
and uh, you want to make sure you get this exactly on on point here right where that fold should be so just make sure that that's lining up and that that's snapped in place if you need to you could come right down here in your document and then hold on shift and drag back up again to make sure it's right exactly where it needs to be okay so there's my folds and now if I come back over here to a uh, to the I'm sorry to page one and then to page two you see both of those come in in the exact same spot so we're in good shape now what I can do is and that's 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 a ton of room for the printer they don't really need that much space they'll they can figure it out I could highlight all these and maybe bring it down a little bit let's try that again one more time I'm just trying to grab the top of this line there we go we'll use the arrow keys and we'll nudge it how's that there we go by not selecting this bottom anchor it stays in place but I can just kinda nudge these down a touch alright that's good enough that looks good that will give them the idea and I can just double check and make sure those folds are hitting exactly where I want them to on my artwork everything looks good so now let's do two things first let's save this so command s to save in case we ever need to come back to this document I'll go to my brochure file my design files I'll create a new folder in here called IND that's where I put my InDesign files and I'll call this um, Let's call this final brochure and I'll hit save. Okay, so now what we can do, this is kind of where the magic happens as far as why we did all of this. We'll come over here to file, export, and we'll jump into that final folder. So file sent, back to the finals, uh, final brochure. All right, let's go with guides. Okay, we're going to make a print, export, we'll hit save. And let's go through and look at all these settings real quick. We want it to export all pages. We want them as pages, not spread, so it looks good. All these options, those look good. We can view the PDF after saving, that's fine. I don't need to worry about these right now. We'll come to the compression, make sure it's not downsampling it to like 72 DPI or something for web, that looks good. Marks and bleeds, this is the whole reason we did this. So we're going to turn on all printers marks. So we have crop marks, bleeds, registration bars, page information, and then also we're going to use document bleed settings. So we'll click on that and it'll pull in those settings we set up at the beginning, that eighth of an inch, and then we want to include the slug area as well, that two inch border where we put in our fold marks. I'll hit export and now you can see this is the whole document size but your printer can take this and they're actually going to print it on a larger parent sheet and then trim it back so what this tells them is when they see this okay here's where this is intended to be folded and they can see their registration bars these color bars to see what your system output it for a true cyan you know magenta yellow black and then we've got the trim for the actual document size where it shows where that starts and then also our crop mark for where the intended uh, trim is going to be so that's how we do it that is the probably the, the best way to send a file to a printer who uh, has no idea what your intended sizing is for this but of course hopefully you called them before the project started so they do have some kind of an idea anyway hopefully that was helpful and in the next section here we're gonna do the same thing but with Illustrator